I'd received a forwarding request service from Tracy over in Australia. Dark Purple Burst. It's a really cool color that we've documented on the show in both 50s and 60s neck profiles, but it's just not available over there. To which I said, hey, did you see Guitar Center has a new version of that? Welcome back, Troglodytes, to your daily dose of guitar information, the Trogly's Guitar Show. That's right, Gibson's exclusive colors are starting to leak out into the dealers, but Guitar Center changed things up by adding a quilt top. Now, the stock photo, honestly, it's kind of lackluster. I think they're going for that whole under-promise, over-deliver. When the tops can range from this, this, or this, you can't just throw the craziest quilted one up there for your stock photo. You're probably going to be letting some people down. But we had just recently reviewed the AMS exclusive Ocean Water, and they also offer that cool honey quilt. Those are promised at AAA tops for $32.99, but the Guitar Center one is just advertised as regular quilt, no promises. And that's why it's a little bit cheaper. But speaking of cheaper, Gibson's exclusives, once these launch, they cut their price from $29.99 down to $27.99. And that's not just a price drop, it's actually just a brand new price according to the website. Website. However, that might have been coincidental because the solid color deep purples have come down from $27.99 to $25.99. So that's the updated information. We had these three to choose from. We chose this one, but then they said, sorry, that was never available to actually choose. So which one did Tracy pick of the remaining two? Let's find out. Once again, a beautiful dark purple burst on the show. This is definitely one of the nicer tops that we've seen. It's kind of an interesting blend between quilt and flame, but since it's so wide down here, I get why they categorized it as quilt. So being a Guitar Center exclusive this time kind of makes me excited because this reminds me of the Bats in Flight model. That was a Guitar Center exclusive. It was a really cool purple Les Paul, and then they eventually came out with some red ones. I'm in the market for one of those if anybody happens to be selling, because I need to document one for Halloween this year. <laughs> But this could be a good tide you over type thing if you can't afford custom shop crimson level stuff or you don't necessarily need the bat ornamentation. It's got a very similar vibe, but it's just based on a 60s Les Paul standard. But hey, dealers, what's with the discrimination against the 50s neck? Why can't we get quilt tops on those things? It's always 60s standards for some reason. Maybe these are just the ones that happen to sell better for them. I would love a slightly chunkier neck in the quilted versions, even if it's a completely different color. But I still happen to have this one in the shop, so I thought I'd show you the difference between a 3A quilt top and just quilt. Now, to be fair, this is like a really prime cherry-picked example, but this is nothing to sneeze at either. But if you're lost on what makes a 60s standard a 60s standard, well, it comes down to a few things. It's mainly your neck profile. It's a little bit slimmer, not quite as full. However, even the 50s neck in Gibson USA territory isn't that big. The two models also have slightly different humbuckers in them, and you get different knobs reflectors versus the bonnet style. As far as construction, they're the same. Solid body, two-piece maple top, and they come in a whole plethora of colors. But for historical documentation, here's the box tag on this one. It does indeed read quilt within it, which makes it different from the dot-com exclusives. But besides just our guitar, we get our usual Gibson case. But what about case candy? Standard Gibson leather strap, a spare black poker chip, a Gibson multi-tool and silica packet, case keys, a pre-packed checklist, as well as a Gibson app marketing sheet. And inside our little black baggie, we've got our Gibson owner's manual, as well as a polishing cloth. And one more goodie, a blank truss rod cover, should you wish to use it. But to learn more about this particular one, let's go ahead and throw it on the workbench to take an individual look at its parts and specs. But you know what? I just noticed something. This guy's got a pick guard from the factory, whereas this guy over here didn't. I feel like Guitar Center missed the opportunity to be a little bit more different from the dot-com exclusives by offering it to come from the factory without a pick guard. But that new realization aside, now let's throw it on the workbench. Inside the Quilty Top version. See how much cooler that'd be? Or maybe another thing that they could have decided on was to have the proper teardrop shape. That would have differentiated it between the other exclusives. But anyways, check out this top. We ended up going with this one because it just looks like it would have a lot of movement in person, and thankfully it does. So once again, that whole wide flame into kind of quilt territory. Maybe not the quiltiest version, but still a very sweet one at that. Now, as far as book matching and Gibson, that's just not really in their DNA. It's not really what they're trying to do. However, this one kind of has the appearance of a book match top, at least with these three stripes there. But then you get down here and it, yeah, it's just what you normally expect. But it changes 
every angle. So let's check out our pickups. It's a Rhythm Burst Bucker 61 in the neck, and the complementary lead version of it in the bridge. It has readings of 7.8k ohms, and the same in the neck, and our middle position just for fun, 3.9. Taking a quick peek in our neck pickup cavity, it's marked PU. For my goodness, does this guitar stink. Nah, just kidding. Probably purple. And then some more alien language down here, likely standing for Les Paul Standard 60s Quilt Top Guitar Center Exclusive for 2023, despite our serial number actually dating this one to 2024. Here's a nice cross section to look at your two-piece maple top joining onto your solid mahogany body. Now as far as how the routes were cleaned up, unfortunately, some beardy beardies in pretty much the same spot in both routes, and even some fuzzes in this area. But as far as what we've seen, pretty par for the course, but I do find it interesting. Zero finish inside our cavities. You can see where the stain spilled over a little bit over here. But what's the story with our bridge and tailpiece? It's your typical Gibson USA products. This is a real Gibson ABR1 bridge mounted on Nashville style studs with a bushing in the body. This version also allows an Allen wrench to be used to raise and lower your bridge. That's why it's hollowed out right there. So you get the historic look without the historic problems. That could be a pro or con depending on who you are. And our tailpiece is lightweight aluminum by Advanced Plating Incorporated. But now our knobs. Here's a closer look into those, the golden reflector style. Why do they call them reflectors? Because the top little part right here that is glued on, they can come off, are reflective. And we've got the historic pointers on it. Although on Gibson USA's, they are not sharp. But the original 50s ones were, and that's why they got the nickname Thumb Bleeders. Because you'd go to turn your knob and ouch! Here's a look at that pick guard removed from the guitar. As is common, they put that little felt spacer right there to not scratch or dent your top. However, occasionally the felt will actually react to the nitro and then you'll be left with a small impression. So it's just one of those situations. You're in trouble if you do or if you don't. But we can move on from the body now onto the neck. It's just your regular mahogany with rosewood. But after conditioning it, this fretboard is nice and dark. 24 3 quarter inch scale with a 12 inch fretboard radius and as the name of the model suggests it's more of a 60s neck profile and you've got your acrylic inlays however one thing that is kind of impressing me about this particular example is very minimal tool marks like do you have a little bit right here yes but as far as like gouging up the fretboards like sometimes you see this one wasn't too bad well, let's capture our measurements now 1.7 inches at the nut increasing to 2.087 by the 12th I capture that first fret neck depth at 0.81 and a measly 0.9 by the 12th. Here's a nice visualization of that neck. It actually gets a little bit flat on the back on this particular example. Still a C-shape though. Definitely lives up to the reputation of the name. 60s Les Paul Standard. Moving on to our headstock, here's another difference between 50s and 60s standards. The 60s incorporate Grover tuners, whereas the 50s have the Clusen style. Personally, I love the look of Clusens, but I prefer Grovers for their function and typical longevity. But it's that Mother of Pearl Gibson logo with your silk screen of the Les Paul model. Truss rods looking peachy on this one. As we saw earlier, there is a blank one in the case, but it comes stock with the standard. And now we continue on to the back. Unfortunately, it's just like the dot-com exclusives. They left the back black. That would have been a great area that they could have differentiated their run between the others as well. I don't care what color it is. I would just love to see a little bit of wood grain. That way we don't have the scratches showing and all that other stuff. But hey, that's just me. But in the back control cavity, once again, we can see some frills left on the mahogany. But as far as the pots, all of our regular stuff, orange drop capacitors and Gibson branded pots. These models feature the thin binding in the cutaway, and not much else to talk about on the backside. Outside of our large strap buttons in this location, and one at the bottom. And we can run up the backside of the neck before we see the Grover tuners. There's our serial number. The 11th day of 2024 initial batch, production number 273. Keep in mind, that's out of all guitars stamped that particular day. These might be exclusive, but they're not like, we're only making 400 of these. Realistically, it's however many they can sell before they come out with a new one to market. All said and done, this one's just a hair under nine and a half pounds, nine pounds, 6.9 ounces. Let's go ahead, plug it in, and hear how this exclusive version sounds.
first impressions, the neck pickup steals the show. Whereas the bridge is rather thin clean, but I think it'll dirty up nice, but it's a good combination between the two. So there we go, Tracy's brand new guitar. I hope you enjoy it, because it's got a long journey to take now. My final thoughts? I mean, it's basically just like any other 60s Les Paul standard that we've demoed. They have a certain set of pickups to them and they play nicely. They are very fine guitars. However, it's starting to get tough to choose which one, and there's so many different prices, you know, all the way from $25.99 all the way up to $33.99, and basically just comes down to the fanciness of the top. But that doesn't mean you can't find particularly fantastic fantastic ones within the regular batches either. But this is a really nice one. I'm glad we were able to document the Guitar Center exclusive. Even if we have already reviewed this color two other times, it's that good. It needed re-reviewed. But all right, troglodytes, if you're interested in seeing your brand new guitar on the show, you can check out my website for my forwarding as well as new guitar day services. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe, and we'll catch you tomorrow on the next one. Take care. If you enjoyed tonight's episode, consider subscribing. I post videos like this every day. And you might even enjoy this next one.